So on Tuesday, this document came out that basically laid out the this scheme about a a bribe being paid for a pardon and how the Justice Department was going to great lengths to examine some documents related to it, going to such great lengths that they went to a federal judge to ask for permission to see some of this material. But the document was highly redacted. You could not make much sense of who this document was about. But what our reporting shows is that it's sort of this um, this 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 elaborate but very sort of Trumpian story about a wealthy Republican donor who named Sanford Diller, this man who was trying to help a Bay Area psychologist who had had been sentenced to over two years in prison on tax charges. This guy, Sanford Diller, was trying to get this person out of prison and basically thought, because I have given all of this money to Republican causes, it should open the doors for me to try and get clemency for this psychologist, this psychologist who had helped Sanford Diller. So in the course of this, Sanford Diller reaches out to Elliot Broidy, the Trump fundraiser. Elliot Broidy connects him with Abby Lowell, who later goes on to become Jared Kushner's lawyer. Abby Lowell, who has gone out there and repeatedly made false statements about Jared Kushner's security clearance. So Abby Lowell, this is back in 2017, uh, works with these folks on trying to get this clemency. Now, fast forward to this past summer, and the Justice Department is looking at some sort of email correspondences that raised questions about what had really gone on here and what was this this wealthy donor, Sanford Diller, trying to do and trying and saying about how he was trying to get this clemency. Bottom line, in 2018, Sanford Diller died. Um, None of this was in the materials that came out on Tuesday. And the simple fact that the Justice Department was investigating this just raised all new questions about the pardon process going on at the White House. And that's because the president has refused to follow the normal pardon process and what he's done. He has treated pardons like party to uh, certainly, you know, allow the public to wonder what's really going on here and how are you using your pardon power? So, and we also know, Michael, as you reported earlier in the week, that Rudy Giuliani has been talking with the White House about a potential pardon for himself and that the president has talked about blanket pardons for members of his own family. Um, We should point out in your story that Abby Lowell and Elliot Brody both say there uh, did nothing wrong here, there was no wrongdoing, and the White House didn't comment on the story. But for people putting these pieces together and trying to sort through some new names and new players here, what was the White House role in this? Did this go to the Oval Office? Is this something that Donald Trump himself would have been involved in discussing? So we know from the documents that there was some uh, back and forth with the White House Counsel's Office, which is supposed to be the place at the White House that looks at clemency requests. We don't know if it went any further than that. From Abby Lowell's side, Abby Lowell's side says that Abby was not representing Jared Kushner at the time. This is before he was representing Jared Kushner, and he would not and never has raised questions of pardons with Jared Kushner. Um, So uh, we don't know a lot about what happened on the White House side of this. We don't know if the Justice Department has has tried to figure that out. Yeah, so Michael, let me ask you, in uh, your great book, uh, Donald Trump versus the United States, uh, you you went through so much, certainly went through an awful lot uh, with William Barr uh, from everything that you wrote, from all of your research. Uh, It it, it must seem, uh, uh, well, nothing strange in this White House, but quite interesting that it is now William Barr who's on the outs after, uh, after he degraded himself for years. Uh, and may, in fact, not even make it to the end of Donald Trump's term. No. 
Donald Trump in many ways has William Barr to thank for his presidency. As I write about in my book, William Barr was really the person who helped guide the Mueller report in such a favorable way to Donald Trump that the president was able to go out and claim that he was fully exonerated, although he he wasn't, and that's not what the report did, um, and that there was no collusion, all the claims that, that Trump made. Um, that happened in large part because of William Barr and how William Barr was able to manage it uh, to the point that, which I, I just, it's just an astounding point of Barr and Mueller and Trump, is that the day after Robert Mueller testifies before Congress, Donald Trump, as only Donald Trump could do, went out and took the greatest hits of volume one of the Mueller report, which is about colluding with a foreign power around an election and foreign interference, and volume two, which was about obstruction. And Donald Trump was able to uh, be certainly not be, nothing, nothing came of the Mueller report in regards to him. Donald Trump was able to go out and combine them into one single act in what he does when he picks up the phone the day after uh, Robert Mueller testifies in 2019, and he calls the Ukrainian president. And he's able to take um, colluding with a foreign power or, you know, foreign interference in an election and obstruction, you know, using the Justice Department uh, to uh, go after your rivals. And uh, he combines them into one act, which turns into impeachment. Um, and that was a result of the fact, uh, in many ways, that Donald Trump had not paid any price around mm -hmm. the Mueller report. And that was directly because of his attorney general, William Barr.